downloading today's episode of the Red Pill Investor. My name is John Ashley, a pseudonym of a realtor here in the great state of Arizona, here to help you with your real estate sales skills. Why? Well, just sort of my way to pay it forward for all the people who've given me the tips, the tricks, the things to say to get the contract signed when I needed it the most. Their only request to me, well, just pay it forward and this is my opportunity to you. The listener, in the hopes that one day you'll pay it forward in your way. That way we'll keep this community alive and kicking. And boy, I sure am excited to present to you today our podcast. Man, I don't know what it is, but it might have been fate. (laughs) Heaven only knows. But we had a little bit of difficulty today in producing the podcast for today. My interview with Angelo Rumora. You know, I don't know if it's the forces at work trying to work against you to get this powerful message, but one way or the other, you're going to get it. I'm going to do what I can to put this together in such a way that you're going to enjoy it. And let me tell you, that conversation I had with him was powerful. Angelo Ramora has got a remarkable story to tell. Now, one part of this podcast I'm not going to cut out is the part where, <laughs> honest to God, he causes me to cry. Real tears, I swear to goodness, this guy made me cry. And this story is compelling. So without any further ado, may I present to you proudly my new friend, Angelo Rumora. All right, Red Pill Investors, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm joined by Angelo Rumora. Angelo, are you there? Mate, I sure am, and thanks for getting my name right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk with our, our Red Pill Investor community. You know, you've got quite a, a story yourself. And before we get into it, you know, I'd love to hear what a guy like you says to yourself. You know, what's your powerful quote? You know, something that you say to yourself when things are getting kind of tough, you know, just something to kick us off right. Go ahead and, and tell yeah. us something good. Well, Carl, I've actually got a wall full of quotes here. My office resembles the, a scene from The Beautiful Mind by Russell Crowe. It's just amazing. I've got writing <laughs> and tape, pieces of paper everywhere. But, mate, something, I guess one of the, the, the biggest quotes that I look at, you know, when I'm down or, or, you know, something's not going right is this. Be patient, pay your dues, and your time will come. Be patient. Pay your dues, and your time will come. Your time will come. That's Be correct. patient, pay your dues, and time will come. Man, now that's a yeah. good quote. Now, how, how does that kind of apply to you in, in your real estate business? I mean, how how's, how's that kind of applied to you? Sure, mate. Well, look, um, you know, with, with everything, you've got to be patient. Um, I guess one of the biggest mistakes that I made earlier on in, in my investment career is I was you know, jumping the, jumping the gun and chomping at the bit to invest in property. I just wanted to buy as many properties as I could and classify myself a successful real estate investor. But I was missing the point. The number one reason why we should all invest in real estate is to supplement our current incomes in jobs that we do not want to be working in. Or even if we do like working in those jobs, well, it's always great making an extra 60, 70, 80 grand in passive income from the rent, right? So I wasn't patient. I was just buying properties to impress the girls, as I like to joke around and, you know, classify myself as this big-time successful real estate investor. You know, I was getting into a lot of debt. You know, I did build my portfolio at a a very rapid pace, but it was just unsustainable. You know, I was buying high, hoping to sell higher. Um, This is when I was still living, excuse me, this is when I was still living in Australia. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's the first most important thing is to be patient. Wait for the right deal. You don't have to buy every property just for the sake of buying it. Make sure that that particular property suits your end goal and where you want to be. Then pay your dues. I mean, I, I never take anything for granted, mate. I believe that, you know, we're put on this earth for a bigger purpose. Um, and, and, you know, we've got to fulfill that purpose. A lot of people live every single day and they, and they don't know why they live it. They don't know why they wake up in the morning. You know what I mean? They don't know why they go to work. I found out my why and I found out my purpose. And I believe that in order to achieve success and get to where I want to be, I need to pay my dues every single day. And that's why I wake up at 6 a.m., you know, my, my, I get myself into the office and I stay here, you know, 12, 14 hours every day. That's what I would classify as paying my dues. So be patient, pay your dues, 
and eventually, when you've paid your dues, your time will come. And it's just, it's just amazing, man. It's like a miracle. Um, I like to tell everyone here in my office, if you do all the small things right every single day consistently, the bigger things just fall into place. It's a miracle. It's, it's unexplainable. I can't explain why and how it happens. Wow. But eventually that time comes and everything just seems to fall into place. That's so, a great there you have it. Wow, that's a great way to put it. I mean, when you do all the small things right, the big things fall into place. You know, we could stop right there. I, I feel so power, powered up right now. I want to go wrestle a bear. I mean, good God. that's <laughs> ooh, Or a that's, crocodile, mate. Or man, a crocodile. That's, uh, that's some powerful <laughs> stuff right there. Good for you. Well, listen, you know, you, you've been in the real estate business, it sounds like, for a while. Would you mind sharing with us a little bit about how long you've been involved in the real estate game as a either as a as an investor or, or as a you know tell me a little bit about your background for sure Carl well look I quit school at a very young age um, to pursue a career in soccer um, I was very fortunate to become a professional soccer player at the age of 18 but unfortunately you know certain things did not work out um, so I decided to hang up my boots as we say in the soccer terms and you know try my you know build my future in another way and um, I guess the life-changing moment for me came when I um, got given a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki. And, and that book just completely brainwashed me and, and, and you know, uh, pushed me into, into looking into finance and business and real estate and shares. And, and um, you know, not having any education at the time, uh, when I quit playing soccer, I had to make a living somehow. So I started laboring. But as I was laboring on dirty construction sites, I still kept educating myself and just immersing myself in anything and everything business, right? And uh, one thing led to another. You know, I was working as a laborer for four years. I gained a lot of construction knowledge and, and I kind of just slowly started looking into real estate more and more. And, um, you know, I, I got a job as a, as a real estate agent back home in Australia. Worked as a real estate agent for a couple of years. Had a few great mentors that, you know, taught me everything that I know today, to be honest with you. And then I just kind of put the two together. Um, you know, I had knowledge from construction, working as a laborer. So I knew how, you know, plumbing worked and, and electrical and all of that chat. And then I worked as a realtor for two years. So I had experience with talking to buyers, talking to sellers, negotiating and all of that stuff. And just kind of combined the two. And that kind of led me to, to the U.S., you know, after a, after a certain amount of time. And, you know, here we are now, um, you know, flipping, flipping property. You know, it's it's funny you should mention that, and, and I hear a lot of people struggle with that question, whether or not they should get their license, you know, and you'd mentioned that in Australia, you kind of came from that licensed path. You had, you know, had your license in Australia. Did you get your license here in, in, in America as well? No, I didn't, Carl. I, I didn't get my license here. To be honest with you, I've got no intention of getting my license here just because I believe that it restricts me to what I can and cannot do, uh -huh. especially here in Ohio. You know, the real estate laws are very strict. Okay. But I've got a crew here of, of a couple of guys in, in my office. I mean, we've got our in-house realty company and in-house property management company and uh -huh. all, of my, um, all of my associates, they're licensed. And um, we've got an in-house broker too. So I, I get to be the bad boy <laughs> without any licenses, mate. There you I go. see. Okay, so what I'm understanding you to say is that you've got the team together and you can be the bad boy, which is a great way to put it. And, and I didn't quite catch that. Could you put that another way again? Yeah, well, mate, look, quitting school at a very young age, you know, I unfortunately did not have, and I still don't have the right grammar skill. And, and I'm very slow at typing, so I'm useless at many things. But, you know, I, I've learned to surround myself with people that are much smarter and that can do the things that I can't do. So that's probably one of the main reasons, you know, why I went about finding people that can support my vision, can jump on board for, for the bigger picture, the purpose, uh, my purpose, and, of course, that kind of becomes their purpose. And, you know, what we needed to move forward as a team and get to where we wanted to be, um, you know, we, we just worked together. And I've got two guys here in the office. They're both, you know, licensed agents. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got in-house property management and in-house realty company, and then it just kind of comes back to me to manage it all and just to point everyone in the right direction. But, Absolutely. you know, if you, yeah, if you surround yourself, mate, with the right people, you don't have to know everything. As long as you've got people around you that can do the things that you can't do. And I think that, you know, Henry Ford said it, 
um, in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I'm smart enough to have smarter people around me doing the things that I can't do. And that's something that I follow. Absolutely. I certainly agree with that. Okay. So, you know, thinking about your career, um, you know, and, and about how long have you been involved in, in real estate, would you say? Um, just over four years now, mate. Four? Four years, that's correct. Outstanding. Good deal. So in those four years, you know, you've, uh, as I understand, you've had some pretty notable success. You, you, aren't you known for something in Australia? <laughs> I, I sure am, Carl. Thanks for bringing that up. I'm actually known for buying Australia's cheapest house cheapest house now now that's notable for a reason can you explain or you know share with some of the listeners as to why that's why that's important well mate look the media picked up on it over there just because it's unheard of anyone buying a property for the price that i bought it what did, okay? what did you, what did you buy it at? i bought a three bedroom one bathroom home for fifteen thousand dollars oh my god in an area where the average median house price is 120 to 150. Oh my so, God. Um, and, and just with, with prices in Australia right now, I'll give you an example. In Sydney, where I'm from, the average median house price is $750,000. So just picture it this way. Imagine if you live on the East Coast or the West Coast, let's say New York City, and then you've got someone that buys an apartment in Manhattan for 100 grand. Okay, so that's kind of, wow. on, on Australian real estate terms, that's what I did. And, um, you know, call it a fluke, call it whatever you want. I've got a particular little negotiating strategy that I follow. And, um, you know, I like to submit a lot of low ball offers. And I just kind of stay true to my technique. And, yeah, mate, just um, unbelievable. Yeah, managed to buy Australia's cheapest house. <laughs> well, that is a great story. Good for you. You know, we'll have to sometime dig d deep into that story. That would be a, a fascinating story to get into. You know, I... I was yeah. pretty curious, you know, I, the reason why I wanted to talk with you is one of our listeners had suggested that I talk to you, and, you know, I've, I've really got a big penchant for people like yourself, real estate professionals who've taken it to the next level, because you've faced, you know, some incredible, you know, struggles, obviously, you've faced some great uh, highs, so to speak, on the mountaintop, you know, and, and I'm always yeah. curious to hear, what would you say would be the biggest challenge you faced last year? And and more importantly, how did you overcome that? Would you mind sharing that with great. me? Yeah, great question, Carl. I guess the biggest, not so much challenge, but I believe the biggest mistake that um, I, I made last year was not setting my goals big enough. Um, and, and we literally hit every single goal that I put on paper halfway through the year. And then we were like, okay, now what? We didn't have any direction. Um, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go after that. So I made sure to set my goals and the company's goals so high this year. I um, you know, as the saying goes, aim for the stars. And if you miss, at least you fall on the clouds. Right. So automatically, when you think big and when you set big goals, it pushes you to look at your business and the people within your business in a different way. You structure everything you do in a different way. It's just much more on a larger scale. It pushes you. It really pushes you every single morning. You have to get out of bed and you have to make it happen. So, you know, that's one thing that we've changed this year. Our goals are extremely high compared to last year where we kind of just, you know, lost direction halfway through the year because we achieved every single goal we set out to achieve. You know, and that can, that certainly brings a lot of, you know, complacency, I think, to your business. You know, when you, when you, at for example the six month mark have achieved your entire year goal it's really hard to motivate yourself i imagine if you're sitting on the beach in you know aruba or something if you really want to finish up the rest of the year strong exactly well look it's just really hard to reassess halfway through the year because you know everything that we kind of anticipated and everything that we set out to achieve we achieved it and then trying to reassess halfway through the year i mean we finished the year very strong and don't get me wrong, we had a great year last year, but I still think that, you know, the biggest mistake that we did was not setting our goals high enough. And I can tell you what, mate, this year they're stupidly high. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So, you know, obviously, you know, that's a great point where you're able to make those goals and then start to exceed them. And this year, obviously, you're on the path to do that. But it's not always been that way, I imagine. I'm, I'm sure it's not always been, you know, the honey and <laughs> milk, milk and honey road for you. I mean, tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe those dark times, the valley, 
you know, where where you felt at your absolute worst. And and, and if you can, you know, please be as explicit as possible. I mean, because, you know, some of the people that are in the real estate business these days that are new, you know, face those dark times and they don't know what to do. And, and hearing it, you know, what it's like from you would probably help. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Well, Carl, you know, to be honest with you, I think one of the main reasons why we didn't set our goals high enough last year was just because of the struggles that I was personally going through around a couple of years ago. I mean, I had $36 in my bank account and I was eating peanut butter and drinking $1 gas station coffees to survive. I mean, it felt like the whole world was, was you know, coming in on me. Um, I had unpaid debts, credit cards in both Australia and the US. I mean, you name it. It was, it was an awful time and I had a lot of, uh, you know, I had a death in my family. My grandma passed. My mum had cancer. So just all that kind of came, came at once. And um, how I got through all of that, mate, was quite simple. Um, I, I remember it clearly, and it was just one day where I questioned myself and I said, okay, so, you know, you've had a death in the family. Your mum's got cancer. You've got no money at all. You know, you're completely broke. I mean, what's the worst that could happen right now? Um, how much worse can it get? I mean, even if they take the clothes off your back, I ask myself this question, do you have two arms? I do. Do you have two legs? I do. I do. Um, are you healthy? I am. So what's the problem, mate? Just get out there and make it happen. Work every single day. Work day and night. Cold call. Email. Get online. I mean, just do whatever it takes. And as soon as I made that switch in my mindset where I literally put myself in a desperate position where I had nothing to lose and I did the little things right, like I mentioned earlier, um, that's when, you know, after time, um, as I was paying my dues, you know, my time slowly started to come and things started to turn and, and they started falling in my favor. And, um, you know, look where we are today. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got a million dollar business. So, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I was just uh, sitting here. I had to actually mute uh, my end of the microphone. Um, when, when did all that happen? If you don't um, mind me asking. First, first, I'm very sorry to hear about all yeah. that that happened, but, but when did that happen? Around a year and a half ago, mate. You know, so the, the reason why is, yeah, the reason why is, you know, I, uh, I had lost my mother to cancer about a year and a half ago. <laughs> And I can completely appreciate where you're coming from when you're saying those emotions, you know, you're, you're, you're like, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do? You know, and then you go, okay, well, yeah. you got to have that come to Jesus with yourself, you know? Sure. And I totally appreciate your honesty with that because that's a powerful story. And, and, you know, now you mentioned that you've got this million dollar business and now you're looking at the, the high side, so to speak. How did you rise above that? You made this decision in your head. You got two arms, you got two legs, you're going to do the cold call. You're going to do the work. You're going to put in the time. You're going to pay your dues. Okay. That's right. But be as specific as possible. Tell somebody who's like, like you. Looking back, say, a year and a half ago, hey, you're in this crappy spot. Here's what you do. You know, go. Give them, you know, kind of give them some, some yeah. ideas about what they need well, to do to get out of that. Well, well, mate, look, I, you know, as you touched on, there was, there was a buildup of so much pain over a period of around three to six months that, um, you know, I eventually just had to ask myself those questions. And, and, and what I, I developed this mindset where anything negative that would happen, I wouldn't I wouldn't succumb to that negativity. So I wouldn't feel too down on myself for longer than 10 minutes. Same as any uh, super duper achievement that came my way, I wouldn't feel euphoric for more than 10 minutes. It's just kind of a constant medium, level head. And I think that if, if investors and people can just develop that type of mindset, I suggest that everyone research an old Greek philosophy. It's called stoicism. Okay, you know, Marcus Aurelius used to practice it and Seneca used to practice it and, and I'm, you know, I didn't know that I was actually stoic until I had all of this pain and suffering come my way and then I just kind of started researching more and more into it and I just developed this stoic mindset. So you never get depressed, you never get euphoric, you wake up every single day and you just make it happen. You just have to go through the motions. You have to get out of bed, you have to have a routine, you have to commit to the numbers every single day. And eventually, as I said, you pick up the phone, you make a call, you send an email, you write something on your to-do list. 
It doesn't matter how minuscule or small this task might seem, if you do those small things right consistently every single day, the big things will just fall into place and look after themselves. I personally love sitting in my office for three hours without anything to do. Um, it doesn't happen because there's always something to do, but even when there is nothing to do, I can just sit in my chair, look at my board, or look at my wall with quotes, and something will inspire me. Something will come to mind, and I'll jot it down. And that little idea, that little moment of inspiration, you know, six months or 12 months down the track can lead to really, really big things. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, mate. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to stop you. No. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're fine, mate. Pretty much just commit to the numbers every you, single day. You know, I was just thinking that, that was exactly what I was thinking. I mean, it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is just a commitment to daily consistent action by any means necessary, whatever it takes. You know, you got a certain task, you get it done, no matter how minuscule it is, and it adds up. And, you know, all those little things that you've done, I mean, obviously, buying a, you know, a, a cheap house in Australia is a great thing to do, you know, but obviously that's not your past, the only thing you've ever done. So, so what would you say has probably been your biggest achievement thus far? I mean, so far here in America, I mean, what, and, and what would you attribute that success to? Well, thanks, Carl. Great question, mate. Well, I guess the biggest achievement that I have ever achieved, and I'm very proud of it, is, you know, we started Ohio Cashflow, a turnkey company here in, here in Ohio, in April of last year. Um, and, um, you know, we have generated $1.4 million last year in revenue, and we've got five full-time staff. So, wow. you know, before that, it, it, was, it was kind of, you know, tough times. Um, but, you know, as I said, um, you know, we committed every single day, paid our dues, and, um, you know, it slowly started coming to fruition. And, you know, we've hit this year with the bang. We're going really strong. I mean, we've got so many great ideas to expand. We want to franchise the business. I mean, we set up our in-house realty company and property management. You know, as I said earlier, the guys are, are licensed agents. And we really want to become a big realty company here in town, along with, you know, continuing to, to service investors worldwide with our turnkey business model. So very proud, mate. I'm very proud. I mean, so, we, 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 we're branded in blue and yellow. And, yeah, I like to um, wear the colors every day. So very proud. <laughs> well, so, so <laughs> I mean, obviously you're excited about it and you've got a lot to be excited about. And, I mean, I hate to sound like a Super Bowl reporter here, but i got to be honest. I mean, what would you attribute <laughs> that success to? I mean, it's obviously not a, a thrown pass at a bad time. I mean, this is planning that you did. What, how did you get to that point? A little, just the, the brief story. I know you can't give us the whole thing. but yeah. Well, mate, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of planning. I mean, we had 34 things on the to-do list before we actually implemented, implemented a higher cash flow and started the business. So based on previous experience, um, I first moved to Kansas City. I lived there. You know, I worked with a few turnkey outfits. It was never actually my, my business where I started it from scratch. And then I kind of saw what, in my opinion, they were doing wrong. Um, you know, I personally invested my funds in, in lower-end markets all around the country, um, and I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, as I mentioned earlier, once again, you know, I was in a very tough position at one stage. And, um, you know, just kind of executing on those things on the to-do list um, one by one, for example, setting up the website, you know, finding a good accountant, finding a good attorney, you know, finding a good office space, et cetera, et cetera. You know, 34 things on that list. And, and once again, I have to keep going back to, you know, committing to the numbers, committing to the hours in the day and focusing within those hours on whatever it is that you want to achieve. And, you know, doing the small things right and just, you know, executing on, 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 on a to-do list. I mean, there's really no, there's no, uh, I can't give anyone a magic pill. <laughs> okay? there's, there's no red pill with, with, with my strategy, mate. Right. It's just, you know, committing to the hours every single day and, and, and that's what you have to do. Every single morning to, from dusk till dawn, mate, just commit to the numbers, whatever it is that you want to achieve and eventually you will find that, you know, success will come your way. Okay, so... I know one of the things that a lot of the people who listen to the podcast, you know, they're, they're investors, they're mm -hmm. realtors, they come from different backgrounds. And one of the things that they always tell me is the most helpful part of this podcast is when they get to, it's kind of like sitting down over coffee with you, <laughs> you know, what would you suppose would be the two or three things that you would recommend as, as things that they could do you know, to, to, you know, like, if you had to start all over again, what would you do? To, what steps would you take today to make that all happen again? 
Awesome, Carl. That's a great question, man. I've actually got one tip when it comes to that, and it's a big mistake that I made, um, and, and I think it's, it's one of the main reasons why we all lose money, okay? And I get a lot of investors, for instance, ask me the question these days of where should I buy? What area is performing well? Um, you know, where are, what, what, it's the, what are the stats and demographics of that particular area? Why are the rents high? Why are the rents low, et cetera, et cetera? And I keep telling everyone, guys, you're getting it the complete wrong way. Forget about the stats, forget about the demographics, forget about the city, forget about the state, forget about the bloody country, okay? Just focus on the people. I can't stress this enough, mate. Make sure that you surround yourself with people that have your best interest at heart. Don't succumb to any pressure tactics or sale gimmicks from whoever it may be. Whatever it is that you're looking at doing in real estate, there are many strategies out there, there are many ways of making money in real estate, just make sure that you first establish a strong foundation in a particular area of, area of interest with the right people and key people that complement your strategy. Now, don't let anyone pressure you into doing business with them quickly. Someone that tries to go down that path is not genuine and they just want to make a quick dollar off you. Okay? So be patient. You know, make sure that you ask the right questions. Make sure that you vet these folks um, and, and don't jump into anything. Then... When you have established your dream team or the right people on the ground, that's when you can start digging into the numbers, uh, uh, the stats and demographics, the city, the country, or whatever it may be. Right? I say this because I work with a lot of investors from all around the world. So that's my biggest and most important tip to everyone. Forget about the figures first. Look at the people. Um, make sure that they're trustworthy. I've got four things when I look at people that I want to work with. Number one, loyalty. Number two, honesty. Number three, no greed. And number four, respect. If I can find someone with those four traits, you know, I will definitely look at doing business with them. You know, I think that's some really powerful advice. And, and I would probably say that, you know, that advice is pretty expensive. <laughs> you know, it sounds like that's areas that you may have made mistakes in the past. And, and uh, you know, this is like hard-won information is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, Carl, check this out. I've got a little tagline, right? Mm -hmm. If you buy the best house in the best street with the best capital growth prediction in the best area... Like your property manager is incompetent and a cheat, you're going to lose money because he's going to steal it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how good the area is or the property. It comes down to the people. The people on the ground will either make or break your investment. So make sure that you have the right people. I mean, I know folks making millions in Detroit. Yes, their property manager might have to collect the rents with shotguns and a hammer, but still, they've got <laughs> the right people on the ground that they can trust and that know what they're doing, and they right. can make the numbers work. Absolutely. Well, you you know you got a good point there. I mean, it, it does take the right people on the ground with a shotgun and a hammer if that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, Angelo, it, it's been a really great conversation. You've been very patient with me. We've had a little bit of technical difficulty on this call, and I'll put things uh, together back as, as nicely as I can so everybody can uh, enjoy the benefit of this call. But I got to tell you, there are so many lessons that I personally have learned uh, from you here. It's, it's just been a fantastic call, and I want to say thank you. Thanks, Carl. Hey, mate, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me, and yeah, thank you so much. So now let me ask you a question. If, if anybody was to uh, want to find out more about you, and uh, follow you on Twitter or check out your website or you know buy your products or anything like that, where would they go to find you? Quite easy, Carl. I mean, if they Google Ohio cash flow, um, that's our turnkey business here in Ohio. I mean, we pop up on the first page of Google. We've got a great social media presence and same as with my name, Angelo Remora. So that's with an E, E-N-G-E-L-O. Um, just Google my name and I'll pop up everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, I mean, you name it, I do it. Outstanding. You know, you've been a fantastic resource. I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you so much for spending it with me. Thanks, Carl, mate. It was a pleasure and you have a beautiful day. Thank you. All right, you too. Take care. All right, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening. Angelo's been a fantastic guest. You guys have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye.